Stories recapped here. Today I will show you a drama, mystery, thriller film from 2018, titled Searching. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. David Kim creates a new user account for his daughter Margot and takes a picture with her and his wife, Pam. As Margot is growing up, photos and videos perpetuating the family's happy memories are being uploaded on YouTube or different files. Eventually Margot starts taking piano lessons and David later buys her a piano so she can practice with her mom every day. One day, Pam finds out that she has lymphoma. The family does their best to fight it, but it doesn't work out and she ends up in the hospital. Margot creates an event on her calendar and names it Mom Comes Home. But due to her worsening condition, Margot drags the event further down and some days later deletes it. At the hospital Margot is playing a sad melody on a toy piano, while her pale mom barely manages a faint smile. And so Pam passed away leaving her daughter and husband to take a picture by themselves on Margot's first day of high school. Windows XP is updated to Mac OS and David is messaging his daughter. A not-so-happy father requests a FaceTime and reprimands his daughter for forgetting the trash. He also asks about her whereabouts and plans. Margot says that she's gonna be running late at her bio-study group and hangs up before David could ask about her final. He still proceeds through messages and she admits not having done so well but would still pass. David expresses how proud he is of his daughter and he types that her mom would be proud too, but deletes the last part. David is browsing the news while listening to some relaxing music, when he gets a video call from his brother, Peter. David joins the call and he's welcomed with a cooking pot POV. His brother is trying to make a recipe that was Pam's specialty, kimchi gumbo. David says that he will look for the recipe but he was sure that there was no pot in it, referring to his stash that he has left on the counter near the other ingredients. Peter puts the jar of oregano away and when David inquires about his use, he quickly changes the subject. While David is browsing Pam's files looking for the recipe, Peter asks him about Margot and how their father-daughter relationship is going. Just as the pot master was about to dig up further personal questions, his doorbell rang and so he had to remind David of sending the recipe ASAP before ending the call. While looking for the recipe, Peter comes across a video of Pam making kimchi gumbo with young Margot. Resurfacing feelings of grief and sadness make David hide the video from his search results. While sleeping, David misses three calls from Margot. When he wakes up the next day he tries to reach his daughter via FaceTime, phone calls, and texts but to no avail. By 3 p.m. there is still no response from Margot and after his work meeting, David is about to text her when he notices that Margot has left her laptop at home which is very unlike her. He leaves her another voicemail during which he realizes that it's Friday and she is usually at her piano lesson at this time. He calls her piano instructor asking to speak to his daughter but she is confused, since Margot had stopped attending six months ago. Taken aback by this, he scrolls through his conversations with Margot in which there are pictures of David leaving her the money for piano lessons and Margot saying the sessions were going great. The worried father calls her school who informs him that Margot hasn't shown up to class that day. Anxious, he texts his brother who suggests that she might have ditched school to go on a trip with her friends and that David should ask them about his daughter's whereabouts. Not knowing any of her friends, David searches for Margot's social media accounts but they are all private. David logs into the family's old computer through Pam's session. She has been keeping the contacts of Margot's middle school friends in an address book. David dials the number of Isaac's home and the mother picks up instantly recognizing Mr. Kim. Isaac's mom tells him that it might be a reception problem since her son and friends went camping and that Margot was definitely invited, and that they'd come back the next morning. The angry father throws a tantrum through a long text but ends up deleting it and simply requesting Margot to call him as soon as she gets reception. The next morning Isaac calls David and says that Margot never showed up to the trip, and didn't respond when he tried to reach her before taking off, and that was the last red flag David needed to file a report for his missing daughter. Soon after, Detective Rosemary Vick gets in touch with David, saying she was assigned to his daughter's case. She sympathizes with him, being a parent herself and asks him to give her a better insight into how the events unfolded. While the detective is doing a recap of Margot's disappearance timeline, David is googling Detective Rosemary Vick and he opens three different links, one video where she's given an award, her Facebook page that shows she has a son, and an article about her building a recovery clinic with ex-convicts. David opens Margot's laptop and tries to log into her Facebook, but her password isn't saved so he clicks on forgot account. A code is sent to her email which he can't get into either, so he sends another code to her recovery email, which he created so he manages to get in. He then looks at her Facebook friends list and calls one of them. David asks him questions like when he last saw Margot and where he was the night she disappeared and notes it down into a spreadsheet. He shows it to the detective, 
who asks David to update her if he learns anything and also to share the spreadsheet with her. So David starts calling Margot's 289 Facebook friends one by one, asking them the same questions. After several calls with Margot's recent chats and acquaintances, he realizes that his daughter didn't have any real friends and that she was isolating herself most of the time. After going through two-thirds of her friends list without learning anything useful, David voices his frustrations to Peter, who suggests taking a look at her offline friends and activities. David looks through her school files and contacts Abigail, the girl who hosted the study group at her house that night. She says that it ended by 9 p.m. and Margot had left by that time. She also enforces the fact that Margot was a loner and used Tumblr a lot. Just as he is checking it, he receives an email from the detective who shares traffic footage of Margot filling up her gas and exiting town. He notes down the place on Google Maps. David checks Margot's bank account and he notices that she has been depositing the piano lesson money there. Six days prior she made $2,500 payment to a deleted user via Venmo. He checks her Instagram account and notices a user called Derek Ellis constantly posting inappropriate comments on his daughter's pictures. He looks up his number and asks him about his whereabouts the night Margot went missing. He tries to dodge the question, but when David threatens to get the police involved, he admits that he was at a Bieber concert. Detective Vic sends David an email containing a fake ID, saying that Margot met up with a forger around the same time she withdrew the money. The detective spoke to security at Venmo and apparently she sent the $2,500 to herself so it can't be traced, and suggests that Margot probably ran away. David refuses to accept that possibility and continues his own investigation. He goes through Margot's most visited websites and finds a streaming website called Ucast. Not knowing how the site exactly works, he clicks on Cast now and ends up starting a live stream. As soon as he does, a user called Fish and Chips joins the cast and leaves seconds later. David ends the stream and starts looking through Margot's saved live streams. Margot had few watchers but her regular was Fish and Chips who initially asked her favorite Pokemon to which she responded with Uxie, because it can wipe memories. They talked almost every day and Fish and Chips once opened up about her struggles with money to pay her mom's hospital bills as she has a bad tumor. Afterward, David has a call with Detective Vic who denies any of the U cast members having a connection with Margot's disappearance, even Fish and Chips had an alibi confirmed by her diner manager and CCTV footage. Just before shutting down Margot's computer, David notices picture of a lake. He goes on her Tumblr and sees another picture of the same lake. He finds it on Google Maps and realizes where she was going that night. He rushes to the lake and calls the detective, but she's asleep because it's 4 a.m. A bit later she calls him back and David shows her Margot's Pokemon keychain he found by the lake. The following morning Margot's case is all over the news. Her car was retrieved from the lake, but Margot wasn't in it. People are volunteering to search for Margot in the forest since there's a lot of ground to cover. The search gets halted due to heavy rain and the internet is flooded with articles and videos about Margot from people blaming her father for negligence to her classmates pretending they were best friends for clout. Frustrated by Derek's Facebook post, David goes to meet him and beats him up. This causes Vic to cut him off from the investigation. David comes across a subreddit dedicated to the case where a bunch of Reddit detectives share their theories. He finds pictures from the car and he notices a Finn's hockey hoodie in the front seat. This leads David through Margot's chats with his brother. To his surprise, Peter and his nephew were secretly meeting on several nights, and he finds some highly suspicious messages. He starts writing an email to Vic, but changes his mind. Instead, he goes to his brother's house and plants cameras. He then starts asking Peter about Margot, what kind of relationship they had and how often they would meet. Disturbed Peter replies that it was a normal uncle-nephew relationship and that they didn't meet often. He shrugged off further questions as he went back to finish making the tea. David doesn't stop and starts reading their texts out loud. Peter replies that he can explain but David doesn't listen and starts beating his brother up, accusing him of the unspeakable. He doesn't stop until Peter shouts that they were smoking pot and nothing near the assumption his brother was making. David ignores a call from Vic and listens to what Peter has to say. Margot was suffering. She needed to talk about her mother, which David never did. And that's why she stopped piano lessons, because it reminded her of Pam and she still didn't have closure concerning her loss. David realizes how little he knew about his daughter and drops to the couch sighing. He ends up picking up the detective's call that brings him to the ground crying. Randy Kartoff, an ex-convict, has uploaded a confession online of torturing and murdering Margot, before taking his own life. And that was enough to declare her dead. David starts uploading pictures for a memorial service and when he's done, a thank you page appears with a picture of a woman holding flowers. 
David realizes that it's the same woman that appeared on Margot's live streams under the name Fish and Chips. He searches the profile picture on Google and finds a bunch of pictures of her doing various things. He doesn't realize that Margot was catfished and that the woman in the profile picture is just an actor for stock photos kinda like my boy Harold, so he tracks down her number and calls her. She seems clueless about the streaming website and all the details that the detective presumably checked out. David tries to reach Vic but she doesn't pick up. He then reaches out to the 911 dispatcher who couldn't connect him to Vic directly, yet she praises Vic's volunteering for the case. David makes the dispatcher repeat herself twice, as he was sure Vic said she was assigned to the case, but the dispatcher said that it was done voluntarily as soon as the missing person report was filed. David takes another look at Detective Vic. Opening the same news page he did initially, he notices that one of the ex-convicts next to her is Randy Kartoff, so he asks to be connected to the deputy sheriff. Next thing we see on the memorial stream is David staring down Vic as she gets arrested. When being interrogated, she explains that six months ago her son found Margot on the streaming website. He had liked her since grade school, so he made up a new identity and started talking to her. They were friends and talked a lot until Margot found his Venmo account and sent him $2,500 for his mother's made-up hospital bills. He had to come clean, but didn't want to do it in public so he followed her that night to the lake. As she was getting high, he got in her car, and she panicked, before he could explain himself. She tried to run and he accidentally pushed her off a cliff. Vic assumed that Margot was dead because the cliff was narrow, jagged and at least 50 feet to the rock bottom and she couldn't hear a sound. So she took lead of the investigation, convinced David that Margot ran away and told the law enforcement team that the zone her body was in was already cleared. She still needed a confession so she drugged the ex-con, ordered him to read a script and shot him afterwards. Now knowing her location, a team has been dispatched to retrieve Margot. Turns out she is still alive and makes a full recovery. Sometime later, Margot is continuously refreshing her application for the music conservatory while texting her father. She's come to have closure concerning her mother's death and is ready to take back her piano passion. Her father on the other hand is no longer reluctant about bringing up Pam, and while telling Margot that he's proud of her he sends the text that he deleted at the beginning of the movie, that her mom would be proud too. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.